Hey everyone, thanks for joining today. My name is Ned Bellavance, and today I thought we could dig into the topic of cloud repatriation. It's something that seems to be in the tech zeitgeist right now with some bold claims from both sides of the arguments. Depending on who you listen to, either cloud repatriation is going to destroy the public cloud, or it's a giant myth perpetuated by big hardware. My goal is to hopefully provide some clarity for you into what the reality is versus the hype and what you need to know moving forward. I think it's important to start with what cloud repatriation actually means, since cloud itself tends to be a vague, hand-wavy term to begin with. Now, my understanding is that cloud repatriation is the process of moving workloads from a public cloud provider to another location that's not a public cloud provider. We could say on-premises, but I think that's too limiting. It could be a co-location facility, an edge site, or a private cloud. The point is, it's not moving to a public cloud provider. Now, why is cloud repatriation even a thing we're talking about? The article that really lit a flame under the topic is The Cost of Cloud, A Trillion Dollar Paradox, from A16Z, where Sarah Wang and Martine Casado made the financial case for companies of a certain size and a certain type, red SaaS companies, to repatriate their workloads to hardware that followed a CapEx cost model. To say the article was contentious would be an understatement, but it it did raise some important points regarding workload placement and the cost of using public cloud. Since then, David Hennenmeyer Hansen, the creator of Ruby on Rails and CEO of companies like Basecamp and Hey, has been making the case for cloud repatriation in a series of blog posts. His companies, Basecamp and Hey, are in the process of moving from AWS and GCP to a co-location facility running on hardware they own. Based on his estimates, they'll save about $7 million over five years by doing so. That's not nothing. Now, assuming their financial calculations are correct, it would seem that cloud repatriation is a no-brainer and that public cloud is doomed. But is it really that simple? Is it ever really that simple? Of course not. If companies were moving their workloads out of the public cloud en masse, we should be able to detect it through the financial reports of the public cloud providers and the hardware vendors and co-location facilities that would be a natural target for a migration. Based on my own research and that of folks like Charles Fitzgerald, I haven't seen any evidence of this happening. When we look at the financial reports, what we actually see is continuing steady growth in all the major public cloud providers. AWS and Microsoft Azure have logged about $80 billion in revenue each last year. And while percentage growth isn't accelerating, it's holding fairly steady given the very large numbers from the previous year. On the other hand, looking at the co-location providers, they don't seem to be seeing any significant uptick in business. The largest co-location provider, Equinix, has been holding steady at about 10% growth for the past few years. That's good, but it's not accelerating. The hardware vendors like Dell and HPE are barely seeing any growth in their compute and storage business, although HPE did just have an excellent quarter. The shining spot for both of them actually appears to be edge computing, which is a topic for another day. When we discuss cloud repatriation, the question we're really asking is, what is the best place for my workload? And the answer is going to be that most hated of consulting phrases, it depends. Well, it depends on what. When public cloud rolled onto the scene, they made a lot of big promises about cost savings and agility. The agility, that was spot on. The cost savings, we can safely call that a lot of smoke and mirrors. Total cost of ownership calculators from the public cloud providers, they made a lot of assumptions that likely didn't hold up in the real world. And those who migrated to the cloud often didn't adhere to those assumptions. The result, cost savings that never materialized. The marketing around using the public cloud has shifted away from cost to instead focus on advanced features and services that would be difficult to replicate on-premises, and also the speed with which you can experiment and scale. When a consultant says, it depends, what they mean is that it depends on the workload, the business, and your priorities. And that's not a one and done assessment for any given workload. Applications have a life cycle, and their needs, priorities, and constraints of the business all change over time. For example, you could have a small development team that wants to spin up 
a skunk works project that involves using AI to analyze satellite imagery. The team wants to be able to spin up a cluster of GPUs in a matter of minutes, store images on large low cost storage, and then tear it all down when the project is done. That is a fantastic use case for the public cloud. The upfront infrastructure cost is low, they can get access to the latest and greatest hardware, and they can scale up as needed. If the project never makes it beyond the beta stage, no worries. You tear down the infrastructure in the cloud and you call it a day. But what if the project is hugely successful and reaches a steady state of consumption? Well, now it might make sense to purchase hardware and run it on premises. Or maybe it makes sense to use a co-location facility that is closer to your customers. Or maybe the application can be distributed across edge nodes for real-time processing. Who knows? The point is that application usage patterns change change, customer consumption patterns change, and reassessing the best place for your workloads is going to be a continuous process. So, given all the bluster and hype around cloud repatriation, what should you do? My advice is to mostly ignore it. Don't focus on what the blog posts and the analyst reports are screaming. Focus on your own business and your own workloads. Decide the best place for your workloads today based on your own analysis, and be prepared to reassess that decision as circumstances inevitably change. Outside of the repatriation discussion, one thing the cloud era has brought us is a new way to approach infrastructure and operations. I'd recommend working to adopt cloud native practices and tools for your workloads, regardless of where they run. That will give you the agility and flexibility to move your workloads as needed, and it will also make you more efficient and effective in your operations. That's an investment that pays off regardless of where your workloads run. The public cloud, private cloud, and edge, they're all growing together. When I think back about our consumption of technology, I can't think of a time where we decided we were we're going to use less of something. We're going to use more compute, more storage, more networking, and more applications. As things expand, you should be thinking about the best way to manage and operate your applications rather than just where they run. At least, those are my thoughts. I'm curious to hear what you think. You can reach me on Twitter at Ned1313 or find me on LinkedIn.